Jake, just on, on from your side of the ball, what kind of I want to talk about the offensive line now for a second because you've seen it. What kind of improvement have you seen from when you got here? Whatever that was, 16, 15, 17, 15, yeah, 17, 13, yeah. whatever it was. <laughs> Feels what, like it. <laughs> what kind of improvement have you seen that offensive line make from when you got here to today? Oh yeah, I mean huge gains. Um, I've played like, obviously against our number one line every every year since I've been here. Because mm-hmm. when I got here, I was a scout team guy a lot, and I'd play against our one line. And even just from the difference from freshman year to now, it's I mean it's it's light years ahead. Um, everyone's so much more physical, stronger, quicker, better feet. Um, just you know, as and as a unit, they uh, communicate better, and, uh, and obviously worked better as a unit better. Yeah. Is one of the key things the fact that there's no drop off? Like they talked about feeling good about 11 guys playing, possibly starting, but you know maybe you know teams can chisel together a piece together like a first string, and the second string maybe is a big drop off, a big problem. But now you go second, third, and you just don't see a drop off for the O line. For the O line? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, there's big guys that you can definitely that that can step in right away for a lot of those starters, um, like. Well, just for example, like I think of uh, Hufford a lot when I, when I think of like backup guys that can step in right away because he's a really talented guy and really young, and and, it's like, and he can get so much better. Even There's a lot of potential beti- behind him for sure. For your group at linebacker, what's the, the continuity for you guys all being back, the three starters, and then even further down the depth chart? Um, yeah, obviously there's a you know huge advantage for me, Mike, and Ov to be back with each other. Um, just because I think we communicate really well, we really play off each other really well, um, and then, but I gotta give a lot of credit to those twos and threes behind us because we got, I mean, at my position we have three guys that I think that could fill in for a game and would be we'd be fine. Uh, like I think Day Day and Kendall Jackson are huge, like he's made huge improvements. Um, then obviously we got Eric Horn at Sam and. Uh, Gary behind OV, and they're all, they're all, they all can play an entire game, and we'd, I think we'd be able to be fine for sure. With you all three being back, do you look, feel like you're the anchor of that defense? Because there are other spots that are going to have to be filled from starters that are gone from last year. I mean, yeah, obviously we have a lot of pull, which is our leadership and seniority. Mm-hmm. But I think, for me, that the core of our defense is our D-line, because everyone, it starts from there. I mean, those guys... Don't get never get enough, never get enough credit. Um, they're oft, often taken on two or three linemen at a time, so us linebackers can play off them, and then the safeties can play off us. So honestly, to me, as long as our our D line's strong and having a having a good day, like we'll be fine. What have you seen from them? Obviously, a little bit of turnover there, not a ton. Yeah, I mean a little bit. Uh, obviously, they're they're still really strong. Uh, like uh, PD's really really strong, really fun to play behind because he can take up. <laughs> Easily take up a couple blockers at once. Same with any. I mean, but they're all, they're all really good. So I think we'll be, we'll be just as good as last year with, from in terms of D line. Going back to the depth that you guys have um, at linebacker, how much does that push you? Because you said you could sit out a game and they'd be able to fill in just fine. But as a competitor, I'm sure that makes you feel like, okay, I don't want them to fill in just fine. I want to make sure I'm at that high level to make sure I keep my spot. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, right, right when those. Like for example, right when Day Day came in, I knew he was going to be a talented player, and he he's some guy that's going to push me to be better, and that's that's what he did. He uh, he definitely came in and made great strides. I knew I had to step you know step my game up to keep proving Coach Vite and Coach Campbell that I'm still number one guy here. But it's good to see that because they're all put because they're all pushing each other too. Like Kendall Jackson's pushing Day Day, and then Day Day's pushing me. So, but yeah, I could totally agree. Uh, definitely makes us starters better when you have good backups. Is there anything in your personal journey here, and anyway, where you kind of joke that it was feels like it was before 2017, you know, earlier <laughs> and all that? But I mean, taking a lot of steps from getting in with special teams a couple games in, and you know, moving into starters role, being able to play multiple spots there. Is there anything that's surprised you, or you surprised yourself that you were able to adapt to or overcome as you you know reach the level you've reached? Um, yeah, I mean, it does help uh, getting in just on special teams as a freshman because you kind of just get a feel for that speed of the game, the physicality, um, and basically what it takes to get on the field, you know, the amount of trust that's needed. But um, another thing that's huge for getting on the field is just having that great leadership in the linebacker room. Like That's another tribute to like, Coach Vite. He's always had good you know, senior leaders in the, in the linebacker room. 
and that's why you like over the years you don't really see much drop off even as seniors leave and you know move on like there's it seems like the linebacker room is always really strong over the last few years